nation. Yes. Who, that we are a royal priesthood. Yes. That we are the inheritance of heaven. Yes. And so, Lord, I just thank you for what you're going to do tonight in and through us, in our hearts. God, that you're going to reset us where we've gotten off track. God, that you're going to reset us where maybe we've gotten into ourselves, into our flesh, or even into religion. <laughs> into habits, God. And all of a sudden, it's habit instead of it coming up from our heart in passion for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. So tonight, Lord, I pray that you lift us out of the muck and the mire. I pray, God, that you order our steps and that we obey you in Jesus' name. I thank you, God, that you are all in all. And I thank you, Father, that your ways for us are good. The plan is good. And so tonight, Lord, I ask that you take this, the word out by the spirit of the living God and that each one of us hears it in our own language, in our own language. Tonight, God, is this is about you and me. This is about you and them. This is about you and whoever is ready, willing, and able. So, Lord, here we are, submitted unto you, spirit, soul, and body. God, have your way. Have your way. We love you. We praise you. In Jesus' name, all God's people said amen. 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 So bless somebody as you're sitting down. Bless them. Say, I bless you with what? I bless you with peace. I bless you with prosperity. I bless you. I bless you with more. I bless you. I bless you. Hallelujah. Bless your brothers and sisters. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. Whew, bless him with encouragement today. Yeah. <laughs> Whew. God is good. Amen. Okay, so um, how's everybody? Good. So I want us, yes, blessed. <laughs> so good, so good. So I want to share something with you really quick before I go. Um, to where I believe God wants us to go. And not everybody made it to discipleship class, and not everybody does make it to discipleship class, and that's really okay. But I love how the Spirit of God moves. Um, if, we, if we set up a time for him to be present and him to uh, it be about him, he's always going to show up. You understand that, whether it's in your house, at discipleship class, at a service. It doesn't matter if there's one here, two here, or 150 here. Of course, you'd be sitting on the floor if that was the case. Um, but in the morning discipleship class, I want to read you what happened with what happened in the class. So I want to explain to you a little bit. Most of you were there, but in our discipleship class this time, God had us each uh, try to hear from the Lord, write down the scripture that he gave us, and then we were to go back in the other room, and they didn't know this was coming, but they were to take the scripture God gave them, and they were to allow the Spirit of God to bring it out as living word. And so that's what we did. So it was really amazing to hear uh, the Spirit of God move through each and every person. It always is, and it always looks different on all of us. And then um, on top of that, the second thing that we did was the way that the order went was the way that everybody signed up or was signed in, because, <laughs> yeah, all right, and so um, with that, that's the way that we, we presented them, and then in the end, they were all brought together, and the Lord says, so this is a letter from heaven, so I want to read you the morning one, because the morning one is a little bit shorter, <laughs> <laughs> they were both amazing um, because it's the work of the Holy Spirit. And so this is what he said to, ha to us as a body. And he says, um, and we know that all things work together for good to those that love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You understand my thoughts afar off. When I think of all this, I fall on my knees and I pray to the Father, the creator of everything in heaven and on earth. I pray that from his glorious unlimited resources, he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will go down into God's love and keep you strong. And you may have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep is his love. May you experience the love of Christ. 
Though it is too great to understand fully, then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Now all the glory to God, who is able through his mighty power to work within us to accomplish in, 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 blah, 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 infinitely more than we could ask or think. Therefore, humble yourselves, lower yourselves in your own whatever, under the mighty hand. In other words, get off the throne and let him be on it. Humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, and in due time, he Amen. will exalt you. Amen. For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it springs forth. Shall you not know it? <laughs> Even I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. But now, in spite of past judgments for Israel's sin, but now, thus saith the Lord, he who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, for, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name, and you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they will not overwhelm you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned nor scorched, nor will the flame kindle upon you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I gave Egypt for your ransom and Ethiopia and Sheba for your exchange because you are precious in my sight and honored and because I love you I give men in return for you and peoples in exchange for your life so no weapon formed against you shall prosper and every tongue which rises against you in judgment you shall condemn this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is from me, says the Lord, from your heavenly Father. Amen. He didn't skip a beat, did he? It just flowed and it flowed and it flowed as though exactly what he said. I'm going to write a letter from heaven to my people, but I'm going to use every one of them to correlate it. I'm going to use every single one of them to write, is the scriptures inspired by the Holy Spirit? Yes. Can you see now how that is so possible? Here he took the same spirit that rose Jesus from the grave, the same spirit that is within each and every single one of us, and he worked for every, through all of us to write something down that you would never know comes from all these different scriptures. It came from Romans and from Psalms and from Ephesians, from 1 Peter, from Jeremiah, from Isaiah, from Isaiah, and from Isaiah. Woo. Is that not so cool? That's what God does if we'll listen. And so sometimes I can remember a day, I'm going to tell on Edie, <laughs> because even though I was in my junk, Jan and Edie had their junk too. I just always talk about my junk because God used them to help me with my junk, but he used me to help them get over their junk. <laughs> right? Okay, so one of Edie's problems that she used to suffer with in the world was guilt and condemnation in comparison. She used to be like, she didn't pray like everybody else. That God would always have her go through the scriptures and write prayers. But because other people don't do that and other people that can just come out the gate and pray, no prayer when it's unto the Lord by the Spirit of God is never null and void. Because we're not standing up in the synagogues and trying to sound, oh, holier than thou and look how much I know. And so Edie's prayers, which I didn't know a thing about stuff back then, and, um, but I knew that what she did was right. But I didn't know how to, to help her other than just keep encouraging her that what she was doing was right. I actually have a couple of her written prayers. 
um, because she had given me them before, and she would have all these tattered up papers in her Bible from her quiet time and how she would hear the Lord <coughs> because he's speaking to us. Yes. So I want to encourage you in the next week or two weeks to get out your journal, and as you're praying to the Lord and you hear a scripture, you hear something, write it down. Just that. Don't add to it. Don't take from it. Because one of the lessons that I was doing in this was don't give me um, other scriptures, just one, or they could be three or four in a row, but not too many because you could just get really, I would have never got through reading this. But the thing is, is that they all flowed together and it was a letter, not just one verse for us, but this whole letter was for this church. And now I can speak it over the church by the Spirit of God because this is what he's saying. But when you start to break it down and you start to break it down and you start to look at it, and that's where we're going today, and I know y'all don't have the letter, but I do, and this is all scripture. But I want us to hear what he's saying as I break it down. And what he's saying, and, as, and, and we know all things work together for for good to those that love God, to those that are called according to his purpose. Are we called according to his purpose? Yeah, he so he wants us to know that we're called according to his purpose. And he's reminding us that even though in the midst of trials, tribulations, different things that we're going through, that he's there and that his plan is still good and nothing has changed it. It says that you know my sitting down and my rising up. You understand my thoughts afar off. This is how personal he is with us. He knows when you're sitting. He knows when you're standing. He knows if your thoughts are afar off when you need to be paying attention. <laughs> Just kidding. He knows your thoughts when you're trying to praise and worship him and you're thinking about what you didn't get done today or what you got to do tomorrow because he's right there. What are those great big words that people use about God? He's omnipotent. What? Omnipresent. Omnipresent. Uh, huh? Omniscient. What's the one where he's everything all at the same time? Huh? Omnipresent, that, yes. But he's everything. So, see, I can't say the big words, but I'm going to tell you he's everything all at the same time. So he's standing in front of me right now next to me, and he is just helping me do everything. He is being who he is through me. And he's doing the same thing with Marcy. He's standing next to her saying, Marcy, this is for you. I want you to receive this. Listen, I want you to know the plan that I have for you is good. Do not grow weary in well-doing. Right. Because as you're hearing the word, you should be hearing some other things to go along with it because that's the personal touch by the spirit of the living God. Because he knows our thoughts are far off. He is so personal with us. And when I think of all of this, I fall on my knees and I pray to the Father, Son, all this is us. And he's going, I see you. I see you falling on your knees and I see you praying to the Father and the Creator that, that you are just worshiping me and that you're acknowledging that it is me that is doing these things in your life. That, that even though you're going through the fire and you're going through the trials of life, you're still down there and you're saying, God, I know that you're with me. That if I commit these things into your hand, you're going to see me through it. That you're going to help me get through everything that needs to happen. And I pray that from, from his glorious unlimited resources that he will empower you with inner strength through the spirit. Now, I know this is Paul's prayer for spiritual growth. But this is a prayer that God himself, Jesus, is interceding for us too. Amen. But it's a prayer that we pray if you look at it as a prayer. <coughs> Your roots will go down into God's love and keep you strong that you may have the power to understand all God's, as all God's people should. How wide, how long, how high, and how deep is his love. May you experience the love and the fullness of life and the power that comes from God. This is amazing. One thing is, these are different versions, by the way. I forgot to tell you that. That whatever version the person read out of is the version that I put in here. I changed the version um, in my thing because I cut and copied it. And, and so that's why you're, you're recognizing that. That's a different version, but it's the same thing. And sometimes when you go and read it in another version, all of a sudden it pops up 
and it becomes alive, and it's like, oh my gosh, that's so simple. Yeah. Yeah. See, he's not complicated. <coughs> And so he wants it to be simple. It's when we get all religious and I have to know how to say omnipotent. There it is. <laughs> yeah. But I can't all the time. And I have no shame in that. Because somebody's going to say, well, what does that mean? I might as well just say what it means. That's true. It's simpler. Yeah. He's everything and everywhere at the same time. He's with, he's with the babies right now. He's with Tina at home taking care of sick kids. He's with everybody. He's with Kenny right now fulfilling the needs that Kenny has. He's with all of us all at the same time. Amen. What a magnificent God we serve. Amen. Amen. What a mighty Woo. God we serve. Woo. Woo. I don't know the song, but that's what's in my heart. <laughs> <laughs> Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God in due time. In due time, he will exalt you. But humble yourself. The word of God says, listen, this is, this is from God to our church. Humble. Humble yourselves. Every one of us in this room, humble. In due time, he'll exalt you. In due time, he'll exalt this church. He's preparing. Amen. Amen. I mean, you carry a baby. Your body gets prepared for nine months to carry a baby or to, to birth a baby. Your body changes to be able to carry the need of the child that's within the mom in the womb. It's no different in the church. God is birthing things all the time, Amen. all the time. And so we've got to go through these things. But in due time, at the right time, it will come forth. Amen. And it will be by the mighty hand of God. So humble ourselves before the mighty hand of God. The mighty hand of God. Not mighty hand in God in power. I'm going to, you know, strike you dead. But the mighty hand of power that I can rise up anything that I call to life. And no man or church can stop my plan. The mighty hand of God is superior to all things. And he lives in us. And if we let the church be his church, he'll do what he wants to do in his church. The church, I have heard, it's falling apart. I praise God, it's not falling apart here. But I, it breaks my heart because church is supposed to gather. People are supposed to come together. Yes, you can watch us online, and yes, that's the day and the age. But when the fire comes, when all of that comes, people are going to come running. And somebody better be here to receive them because watching it on TV when it won't work anymore, you better know where to go and the church doors better be open. Full of spirit-filled people who trust God with everything, who will humble themselves under the mighty hand of God. So don't grow weary in well-doing. Keep pouring into the people in your life. Keep inviting the broken people to church. Because there's healing in this house. There's healing in this house. For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. We all must need to be hearing these things because God's encouraging us by his word. Amen. That's pretty awesome. Amen. I love it. I need to hear these things. When I started reading what everybody wrote, I thought, man, only God could do this. Brittany had to leave, and so I made a, uh, no, I, I airdropped her copy because it's on my iPad too, and I have a written copy, but, um, and I watched her uh, in a few minutes. She opened it up and started reading it. She goes, I love this kind of stuff. And she just started reading it. And I thought, wow, that's so cool. Because you can give something somebody, to anybody, but will they read it? And this is kind of wordy. I mean, there's a lot here, especially the nighttime class, because we had a bigger class. But it's so anointed by God. It's so full of love and so full of hope. It's so full of him telling us to remember the plans that he has for us are good. This is all the word. It can't get any better than that. 
I so love it. So now he says, listen, church, <laughs> don't remember the former things. Don't remember what you used to be a month ago because I can tell you that we used to minister till 3 o'clock in the afternoon three years ago. For three years, nonstop. But I don't want to live in those days. Those were days of learning and days of prosperity in many different ways, but today is a new day and new prosperity. Amen. I love the, what I've learned, and I love the people that I'm connected to because of that, who God used this body to connect people in relationship. People that would never walk into a church walked into this church and found love, found God, because he is love. Amen. But I have to let go of those things. They're great testimonies and stories, and they're amazing, but this is a new day. So he says, let go of those former things, good and bad. Healing school was amazing to watch the people go through because I got to watch people let go of a lot of old stuff they had been hanging on to years and some stuff they didn't even know that all their, all their sadness and tears was really just anger within them. But if they wouldn't have went through the process of each thing, they wouldn't have been able to purge that. They had to have a safe place. That's what River of Life has been all these years. And most of it happens up here. But some of it happens out there. But even in that, he says, what you just went through, you got to let go of that too because today is a new day. Yeah. Hang on to it. Learn from it. Don't let the devil come and steal it from you. Don't make it an idol. Keep your eyes on me. So do not remember the former things nor consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Amen. Now it shall spring forth. Not later. Not yesterday, but now. He says, shall you not perceive it? Shall you not know it? Don't you see it? Well, of course not if you're still looking at yesterday or you're looking for tomorrow. But see, you need today for tomorrow. And you need today from yesterday. So we've got to stay in the now, in the presence of God now. Because now, he says, I shall Spring it forth. Now is the time. Shall you not know it? He says, while you're in that desert that you're in, you're there. While you're in that desert, I'm going to make rivers. He says, and while you're in the wilderness and you don't know what way to go, I'm going to make roads. Amen. So, yes, you're in the wilderness. Yes, you're in the <coughs> desert, but I'm there with you. Shall you not perceive it? Yes. <laughs> yes. Humble ourselves before the mighty hand of God. Ah, oh, but God, the wilderness, but God, the desert, I'm, I'm so, yeah, there's a river right there. Shall you not know it? Amen. You don't have to be thirsty. It's, I'm there. Amen. But now, thus saith the Lord. He who, create, he who created you, O Jacob, and he who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. <laughs> I have called you by your name, and you are mine. Amen. River of life, you are mine. Amen. You're mine. Rather you're in this room, rather you're in the United States somewhere, you're mine. Because the river of life is mine. Because the river flows from the throne of God and is full of life. Yes. It's moving continuously. It's opening up the banks and it's getting wider. And the bottom is always shifting because of the rushing waters. Yeah. You'll never be comfortable. Mm -hmm. If you're comfortable, you're in the flesh and you're becoming the frozen chosen. Yes. Yes. That's not a good place to be. Remember being kids g going down the river, and of course your parents are freaking out, but you're in an inner tube, and how cool it was just to put your feet up and let that current just take you? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hey, get in your inner tube. Woo! Woo! Yes! And let the current take you. Amen. Amen. <laughs> 
Yeah. I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. You are mine. When you Be pass you through the waters, and through the rivers, they will not overwhelm you. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. You're going to pass through those waters. But I, being God Almighty, will be with you. And through the rivers, they won't overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you will not be burned or scorched, nor will the flame kindle upon you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I gave Egypt, I give Egypt for, for ransom and Ethiopia and Sheba. Mm. Exchange. In exchange. Because you are precious in my sight and honored. Because I love you. I give men in return for you and people in exchange for your life. Know this, church. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. They're going to form. But they shall not prosper. Keep your eyes on Jesus. They're forming. You see it. You get it. But remember what he says. They shall not prosper. Every tongue that rises against you in judgment... In judgment, you shall condemn. You won't go and condemn them and condemn and camp. It's going to be your life's example that will have them shrink back. And people will be like, I don't know what you're seeing, Jim, but that's not what I see. The joy of the Lord is my strength. That's what I see. The joy of the Lord is my strength. You know, so the, re the, the report of the Lord is good. Whenever anybody or anything comes to steal from you, to kill you, or to destroy you, you know it came from hell right at that very second and moment. It says, you shall condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. And their righteousness is from me, being God. This is what God says about us. All of us. It doesn't get any better than that. Amen. I want another letter. Amen. I can't wait to do it again. But now you all know what's going to happen. But still, in the end, you don't even realize that that's what's happening. You don't even realize, even when we stood up and we all read them again at the end, and it flowed, it's not the same when you can read it from the, after we, it's been written and it's in a form of a letter. You have to, you got to skip over titles and addresses. But man, what an amazing word for the body of Christ. I can just feel his peace and his presence in here tonight. I can feel his joy. I can feel his approval. What a better place to be. Knowing that God says, well done, fine and faithful servants. You're mine. You're listening. And I love you. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you so much for the word of God. I thank you for all of this. This page written out is all your word, all given by the Spirit through each one of your servants. I thank you, God, that you think these things and you say these things and you proclaim and declare. I thank you that we receive them today by the Spirit of the living God. I thank you, God, even in the wilderness, that our eyes are going to look to you. We're going to look for the roads in that wilderness. We're going to look for the river in the desert. We're going to look for you, God, instead of looking at the circumstances and the things that we're going through. You're so amazing. And I love you so much. We love you so much. Thank you for the letter. Thank you for reminding us of all these things. Thank you for reminding us to be humble again. Thank you, God, for reminding us that we are chosen, that you give people for us.
And we're going to um, close with um, the joy of the Lord. You'll have to go out and find it because I don't have it up there. Ah. Oh. Hmm. Just hang on just a second. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Hey, thank you. So a um, couple things. One is for Sherry. Um, I just want to encourage you, Sherry. I actually was thinking about you on the way to church tonight. And I think about you and every time you seem to go into those places, when you get back here, God always zaps you. And you just go down in his presence and he just fills you. And that's what I just want to encourage you that um, as you do that, even at home, and you just rest in his presence, you're going to start to feel his presence upon you, and he's just going to fill you and encourage you. Okay? And the other thing I just want to um, um, speak to you is no fear um, that, you know, there's lots of changes going on within your family and, um, and you know, it, within, I'm just going to say within your family. And so sometimes it can bring fear like, oh my gosh, what's next? So oh me, oh my. And so I just want to bless you with peace tonight. And Lord, I just um, bless your daughter with peace tonight. And I speak peace from the top of her head to the soles of her feet. I thank you, God, that you cover her with your love. And perfect love, which is your love, casts out fear. That it shall not overtake her, God that she will remember. And Lord, I pray that as she sits in your presence, that overwhelming presence of who you are rest on her in Jesus' name. Oh, and when she gets up, she's going to need help. <laughs> Not because she physically needs help, but because her whole body is wobbly because of your presence. Holy Spirit, fresh touch right now. In the name of Jesus, I just bless you. I just bless you, Sherry. Wow. <sighs> New life. Yeah. Amen. 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 Yes, 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 yes. So Renee and Lyle, um, when I was standing up there, um, I was thinking about your son and your daughter-in-law and baby that were here. And, you know, just the, the kind of people there, I don't know them at all, really. Um, but I want to tell you that, um, and I know you've heard this before, but it's important to hear it again. Well done. Um, you, you've really poured into your family, and there's evidence of that. And, um, and I, I know that you know not to compare where this one's at to that one, that you can receive them all where they're at. I feel like your family's going to go through a new growth spurt. Um, and also in the, and I mean a spiritual growth spurt. And also, um, it's like I hear the word recovery. Um, I don't know what that would mean, but I feel like there's going to be a recovery of something that hasn't been able to be recovered. And I feel like the Lord is going to recover something um, in your family as a whole. Um, and it's a good thing. It's not a bad thing. It's a good thing. And so I don't really know um, what that is. And then... Um, also about your work, um, I just want to speak into your work a little bit. Actually, I just want to bless you. I want to call in the patients that need to be there, that need to be touched by a woman of God. Not only are you giving them the, the needs that they have in a professional world as, as, as a, a doctor, but also as a woman of God um, by the Spirit. So I call them in and ask God that you would bless her. And Father God, that you would even equip her to a greater degree to be able to maintain the things that she needs to maintain and let go of the things that she needs to let go of in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And I pray a new song. I feel like you need a new song in your heart. Just a new song, a new season. I feel like you're ready. I feel like it's been coming a long time, almost a year. But I feel like you're finally going to be able to plunge in. And God says that it's his timing. So like he said, I'll exalt you when it's time and I feel like things are going to start happening for you so amen. yay amen. Yes. yeah yay God amen amen so just want to um, just listen a little bit more those were the two that came to me right away up here um, yeah so God whew. so we're going to minister out of the cross tonight um, hang on I just I don't want to let go 
So um, this is for you, Nevea. Um, I don't. You guys are like just a couple months into your school year, and uh, I know, isn't it so hard as teenagers to get words from the Lord in front of everybody? Like, ah! um, but anyways, um, I I, I want to encourage you to be strong in the Lord, um, and that God says that you have more integrity than many. And that people see there's something different about you and they're drawn to that. But at the same time, there's other people drawn to you that want to drag you out of that. And God says, hang on to that. And he says for you to ask for wisdom from the Lord uh, to know the difference. So I pray and bless you with discernment tonight. I'm going to grab your hand. Discernment to know the difference between the people that are brought into your life. Whether they're to bring you further into the things of life of God's call on your life and God's leading on your life than the world's. And that you will be strong in the Lord and the power of his might so that you can say no, even though your flesh might want to say yes. But you will be able to say no. I pray Holy Spirit to rise up in you like never before in this next year. It's crucial for you. So God bless her in Jesus' name. Amen. I should get your partner here in crime, but I won't because then it would be my flesh, but I would like to just to pick on her, but I won't. <laughs> just because it's always fun to have a buddy get it too, you know, right? Yeah. So, all right, you guys, we are going to stand up and we are going to close with the joy of the Lord is our strength. We're